Hey everyone, Isaiah Mapella with the Utah Pride Center here. We are going to look for our executive director, Rob, and we are going to ask him a few questions. Well, hello, Rob. Well, hello, Isaiah. Thank How are you? Here. I like being a little fancy in the garden and <laughs> communing with our new bees and saying uh, my good days to Queen Beyonce. Um, good to see you. What's up? Great seeing you. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Absolutely. Let's go. Let's talk about it. So why is pride important? You know, pride is one of the most important parts of our year, I think. I think that it's vital for us as a community to remember our history, to be seen together, to be celebrating each other together. I think it's one of the most fabulous times of the year because... I think back to my years where there was no such thing as pride and we now have this amazing opportunity to be with each other, connect to each other, celebrate, think about where we're going. Fun. So what is the Utah Pride Center doing for Pride this year? <gasps> Funny you ask. It is all happening. Pride Week is going to be totally crazy, something completely different and COVID safe. And I think that it should be different and unique. We've had a bit of a strange few months, so I think our pride festival should reflect that so we've got a few things happening we've got a pride story garden happening we've got the rainbow march and rally going on we've got pride month proclamations and flag raisings by the mayors we've got the interfaith service it's going to be wonderful so tell us more about the pride story garden what is the pride story garden well i think that this is going to be one of the most exciting things happening we um you can see i'm busy packing up here with all the the stuff that we're getting ready for that story garden. So the story garden is a way for us to celebrate and um, remember our community and our history. So we are creating 20 different spaces with 20 different stories. We wanted to do something on Washington Square. We wanted to make sure that it was on the weekend that Pride is traditionally held in Utah. And we wanted to make sure that it brought community together and was something that was COVID safe. So we've created 20 different spaces with 20 different focus areas it's going to be interactive it's going to be fun and it's going to be educational Isaiah we've been reading some of the stuff that we've got in the story garden and I have to tell you that I did not know that the word pride one of the things that historians say is that it actually was first used in 1967 it was um initially personal rights in defense and education p-r-i-d-e now I have to tell you I've been in the queer world for quite a long time, I did not know that part of our history. And I think we should all learn a little bit more. And this is what one of the things that we're going to be doing. So we've got history gardens with all sorts of important pieces of information that we should all know. You are doomed to repeat history if you do not remember your history. For example, here is Kristen Reese. Those of you in Utah who do not know who Dr. Reese and Maggie Snyder are, come to the Utah Pride Story Garden and find out more. That sounds like a blast. It's going to be fun. Look at all our flags. It's so good. We've got the lipstick lesbian flag. We've got the butch lesbian flag, the drag flag, the transgender flag. Come and do some learning and have some fun. So do you need volunteers? Oh my goodness, yes. Please come and volunteer. What have you been doing for the last 12 months, 14 months? You need something to do. You need something fun. So go onto our webpage, volunteer. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities. We've got volunteering for the rally. We've got volunteering for the Pride Garden. It's going to be five days. So we need people to come and help, walk around, make sure that everyone's safe and looked after and just connect with community. It should be a really, really wonderful experience. So is the Pride Story Garden only historic stuff? No, no, it is our stories. It is historic stuff, but we've really tried to highlight queer voices and queer art. We've got all sorts of artists from all over Utah coming together to bring their art and their perspectives to this garden. So while, yes, you're going to be reading history and, yes, you're going to be having a fun time interacting, we're also going to be highlighting queer artists and performers. This is a painting by Bill Lawson. It's called Coexistence. Um, we yeah. love this here at the Pride Center. We want to highlight these queer voices and BIPOC voices. Another important artist in Utah, of course, is Trevor Southey. Trevor Southey has been in the, an incredible artist, uh, community member, and what he brought to our community for so many years was vital to the growth of the LGBTQ community in Utah. So we want to highlight artists and their voices and their ideas and their beautiful works of art. So come along. They're two huge gardens, all focused on art. It should be fun. So what spaces in the garden are you looking forward to most? 
Well, we wanted to make sure that the garden was fun and interactive. We've got all sorts of spaces that create some sort of interactive element. Um, here you can see our wisteria lane in the building, but we wanted to try and create spots that people can stop at, have fabulous selfie pictures at, remember what the garden is about. It should be a good, good day out for everyone. One of the other things that we've also got going, um, because we want to make sure that it's a fun family event, is we have a unicorn hunt. And you've got to be very, very quiet if you're hunting unicorns. You can see here the youth and family space is getting everything ready and lined up. They've got their selfie station planning. They've got their youth voices planning. And need it be said, please, folks, can we do some of this? in our schools. Oh, Isaiah, you asked me which gardens I'm looking forward to most. Um, there, are, there are a lot. Um, I'm so excited to see our community coming together to create the gardens. So we have different community organizations who are bringing their stories and their history to the garden. We've got Equality Utah, we've got Planned Parenthood. Um, it's going to be really, really fun to hear about the other wonderful LGBTQ organizations and supporting organizations who all help contribute to this community. We've also got um, a garden focusing on BIPOC and the queer BIPOC experience. It's actually called Salt Lake City is Burning. And for those of you who do not know your queer history, you should brush up on um, Paris is Burning yes. before you come to that garden. What's your favorite quote from Paris is Burning? Reading is fundamental. Yeah. Um, of course, link to that. We have a drag garden, so I wouldn't miss out on that. We've got some amazing performers who bring some of their art and some of their performance to the space. And you can find out more about the incredible drag scene here in Utah. Sounds like a lot of fun opportunities for photos. Can you show us your best pose? Yes, I can. Oops. Pull that down a little. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we take the lift? I think we should. Do you need tickets for this event? Uh, yes, please. One of the things that is a big difference this year is that you're going to need tickets, um, online tickets to get in. Um, because we're trying to be as safe as possible for COVID, we want you to um, buy your tickets online. There is a box office though, so if you want to arrive on the day, you can get tickets at a box office, but it is far safer to go online, get your tickets for the specific day you want to come, the specific time that you want to come, and make sure that you're there so that you can experience the garden in a safe way. We can only let so many people in at any one time. Um, if you can't afford the tickets or you need a little bit of help, please reach out. We do have a bunch of scholarship tickets available and reach out to the Utah Pride Center and we want to have as many people as, as we can there. I've already heard wonderful stories about schools who are bringing their GSAs there on the Thursday afternoon um, to come and have a look at this garden, to come and experience this garden, and to come and enjoy this space. What if you need a ride? Oh, one of the things that you can do, I had forgotten about that, UTA has offered free transport to the Pride Garden and back again if you show your Pride ticket. So bring that along. Do you mind if I get a snack? Of course. Yeah. So what is the purpose of Pride? Oh my goodness. So I told you a little bit downstairs that Pride is about connection and celebrating ourselves. For us here at the center, it's also got a financial element and we, we need the, the income and the revenue generated by Pride to carry on with our incredible services, our suicide prevention, our youth space, our senior services. So please come and help not only support the work and the incredible services and resources here at the center, but come out and have a good day. It should be wonderful. So while you're grabbing a snack, will there be food and drinks at the Pride Story Garden? Well, yeah, that's been a difficult one. Unfortunately, due to the Department of Health regulations that we were working under, they said no food, no drink. But we came up with a plan. We've created a food and restaurant guide and we've got 14 different restaurants, queer owned, BIPOC owned restaurants that are advertising on our Pride program. And you can check them out. And if you've got your Pride ticket, some of them are offering wonderful discounts. So please go and support the local restaurants and the bars. Unfortunately, we can't have them there this year, but you know what? They'll be back in 2022. So will you guys offer water? Oh yes. 
That is important. You'll have water as you're walking around. We want to make sure everybody stays hydrated. It's going to be a hot summer day, I hope. So yes, there are a couple of little things that we can offer due to the health regulations, but we can't do the big food truck situation as we did in the past. Sounds like a blast. It's going to be fun. So what other events do you, does the Pride Center have planned? I spoke to you about the flag raising and Pride Month recognition. We've got the interfaith service on Wednesday the 2nd. Um, one of the things that I think I'm looking forward to probably the most is our march and rally, where we're trying to highlight the voices that aren't often heard in our communities. So we've got the transgender voices, we've got POC voices, we've got BIPOC voices, um, we've got um, bi voices is what I meant to say, and um, really trying to make sure that those individuals whose stories and voices need to be heard are celebrated at our rally. It's gonna be up at the state capitol, it's gonna be wonderful. And from there, we're gonna take our posters and our, our, our march memorabilia, and we're gonna march down State Street telling people what the concerns are of the queer community and highlighting those issues and making a list of demands so that we make sure that as leaders hear us and as leaders see us, they know where to take action and how to take action. So what are the dates for the Pride Story Garden again? So Pride Story Garden is on the 3rd of June. It runs the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's crazy, it's gonna be fun. Please come out. There are a bunch of other events that are happening around Pride. I know that the Sun Trap is doing some cool events. And I also know that Todrick Hall is in town and the Todrick Hall events is also part of going to be supporting the Pride Center. So we're really excited about our community coming together to support our work here. It's gonna be cool. Awesome, anything else you want everyone to know? Um, I want everybody to know that the work here at the Pride Center is worth celebrating and worth supporting. And we really hope that you think about buying a ticket, helping somebody else get a ticket. We hope that you think about volunteering and coming out and supporting the LGBTQ community here in Utah. Um, it's, it's incredible work, it's exciting work. Our team up and down here through the building, our incredible volunteers have worked really hard on creating something which we think is, is pretty special and quite unique. In the USA at the moment, we were one of the few Pride Centers to do um, something big and splashy and community focused last year through our road rally. And we are determined to be leading the rest of the Pride Center pack again this year in 2021. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to put on my work clothes and I've got to get to work. So in the words of the remarkable Miranda Priestley, that is all. Bye Rob, thank you. All right, everyone, so it seems like there's a lot of work to be done, so head to utahpridecenter.org to get your tickets, to buy your yard signs, and to volunteer. See you guys all at Pride. Have a great one.